I have kept this in my heart so long. But to let it go, it's like... <laughs> Bradley called me from Albany in the afternoon. The assembly had begun its 4th of July weekend. It was to meet you, Isabel, and Faith in Philadelphia, but he wanted to see me first. His voice on the phone was like I'd never heard him before. He was a man as overextended as any man can be. He was thumbing the state, speaking for a tax bill which would have had a big impact on Jack Boland's real estate holdings. His daycare program was close to passage. The inner city school breakfast program, which he started in Port Charles, and Buffalo was about to get state funding. He had held up construction on the airport. It cost Boland and Quartermain money, while he bucked the unions for minority membership. And he was tired. He was bone tired. And I said, come. I'll be waiting. He pulled up into the driveway around 9 p.m. Yeah. I had a pitcher of iced tea on the porch. And I watched him coming up the walk. And my heart sank. He looked older than I did. He came and he fell into my arms with despair. My Bradley, who never walked anywhere but moved through space like he owned it, sat down with me on the porch. And he told me. This trouble I've made, and I don't see any way out of it. I knew he meant it. And I was free. I think I knew right then some of what Bradley was trying to tell me. I'd heard the rumors about him and Elizabeth. I knew they'd been together hours on end, day after day, and I knew how much he depended on her. And I knew she loved him. It isn't only Elizabeth. Tell me everything. Elizabeth realized I realized last fall when the rumor started what we had to do. And in no time since then have we even been alone in the same room. That can't be easy. It hasn't been. Eugene knows. <laughs> he tried to help us. Isabel? I will do anything to protect Isabel and the children. Only now I don't know what that is. What's happened, Bradley? I got a call last week from Jack Bowman. He asked me to a meeting with Edward Quartermain and Frank Smith at Quartermain's house on Long Island. I flew down last weekend. I was hoping they were ready to propose some kind of coalition, a working compromise. But I was wrong. They wanted me to back off the tax bill. They wanted me to lay off the unions and guarantee no further interference with the airport development. They asked me to promise not to run again. Forget about Washington. Surely they can't mean it. They do mean it. The alternative is they go public about Elizabeth. And about Kylie Quinlan. Judge Quinlan's daughter. They had a private detective following us for three months. They have hotel receipts. They have pictures. Kylie has carried my child. They have the hospital records. Oh, my Lord, God. I can get myself out of Albany 
and back to Mount Hebron Church, or they'll... Or they'll take the evidence and, and take it all down. The family. Mama, all the hard work. Everything I've come to represent in this community is about to be taken down. My example as an instrument of change is all about to be destroyed. And I can't do nothing about it. I can't give in. And I can't not give in. Cannot let them do this. There is a way. We'll find a way. The hardest thing is... Is your faith in me? You are my son. I was angry. I was angry at Bradley. And at that moment, I would have killed for him. I would have given my life for him. I would have died for him if I thought it could help him. We talked until midnight. I couldn't comfort him. I couldn't ease his pain. I couldn't ease his choice. And I knew I mustn't let him go to Isabel, not yet. So I asked him to stay the night. He agreed. I left him fully dressed, stretched out on his own bed in his own room. And then I, I, I went to bed, but I couldn't sleep. 